For more on the race for president, let's go to Craig Crawford, politics blogger at craigcrawford.com and author of The Politics of Life. Craig, always great to have you on the show. Yeah, I'd say Ryan was more of a blip than a bump. Certainly not a bounce. Well, we're going to have to see whether that blip grows larger into a blimp or who knows what it's going to turn into. <laughs> well, I've been amazed. We got a statement from somebody senior in the Romney campaign today saying we don't want to put out specifics because specifics just get campaigns in trouble. My first thought was, man, they're admitting they're trying to scam the public. They're not even willing to tell us what they believe. How do you understand this? Well, it's actually pretty good politics, uh, particularly for a challenger against an incumbent who wants to make the incumbent's record the, the, the agenda of the campaign is, is to keep it vague. And actually, I have to say, speaking as a political analyst, I thought the Romney campaign's done a pretty good job of keeping it vague and not getting into trouble on specifics. But they've blown that up. They've blown that up now with picking Ryan because here's a guy who is known for his specifics. And now they've spent the last week talking about, about the details of Medicare in ways I can't imagine they ever wanted to, but I don't know how they couldn't have predicted that. I mean, that's what you get with Ryan. Well, you know, it seems to me that with Romney, they were committing fraud because you didn't know what they were saying. It was all double talk. With Ryan, they're committing fraud because the numbers just don't add up. I mean, either one of them is fraud as far as I'm concerned. Even the SEC, as weak and pathetic as they are, would, wouldn't, wouldn't accept these numbers if somebody submitted them with, you know, for an IPO. Facebook's well, man, numbers were better than this. Maybe they'll get us distracted with the, the new uh, release of uh, Ryan's shirtless photo. We now have him shirtless in, in, in a photo. Well, well look, there, there is, there's no question this is going to be good for the economics of whatever workout group that is that he's been marketing because they've suddenly yeah. become, you know, the hot talking point in all the evening shows. But all right, look, the Romney-Ryan ticket can't talk specifics. So they just get themselves in a mess. But they did give us one number this week that uh, got some attention, 13 percent. And I hate to intrude in your personal life, but uh, <laughs> how do your tax rates compare to that? I figure, I think it's about double. I, my effective rate, I, I just pay whatever TurboTax, my TurboTax software tells me to. <laughs> and I, I think it's about 27%. I mean, at 13%, Romney's tax rate is almost as low as as Ryan's body fat percentage. <laughs> <laughs> well, that may be that may be the new marginal rate that he's setting for people with income over one hundred million dollars. Yeah, if your income's over one hundred million dollars, you only pay the percentage. That, you know, this would be as logical as what they're doing. Yeah. But but how does this play? You're the political consultant. Does thirteen percent stick in the craw of most voters who say, "Wait a minute, this guy's worth a zillion dollars. Why am I paying more than he is?" Well, I noticed Peter Hart, a Democratic pollster, but a, a straight. Straight forward, but um, has been doing some some focus group polls and is saying that he's finding pretty strong evidence that this tax issue for Romney hurts among women, lots of women uh, who see it as uh, suspicious. Uh, and that's the word that keeps coming up in the focus groups. Huh. Uh, maybe that's because a lot of women know their husbands hide their finances from them or something. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> but the, the, he does find it a problem among women. That's fascinating. I hadn't quite taken that gender gap uh, sort of analysis. Hadn't heard that before, but we'll have to think about that one. Look, you're also from Florida. You grew up in Florida. You have a better sense and feel for the Florida electorate. Obviously, the Medicare issue plays differently with seniors than it does with other groups. Has Florida now become a real battleground in your perspective, as opposed to being a state that, you know, Democrats kind of said, we'll fight for it, but we kind of knew it would not end up in our column? Well, you know, when we talked last Friday, it turned out we didn't know, but hours before Ryan was picked, I said it wouldn't happen, that he wouldn't pick Ryan. And one of the big reasons I thought was I couldn't believe they'd want to risk this whole Medicare debate we've had, like we've had for the last week in Florida. And even in the polls that show a little bit of a blip for Ryan, uh, for Romney, it's not showing up in Florida. And there you have a lot of Medicare retirees who are actually leaning toward Romney. I mean, Romney has given up a, a niche of voters here that where he was doing well uh, among white retirees and non-college working class, uh, mm -hmm. both of whom, uh, while they like some of the rhetoric about cutting government, when you start talking about actual entitlements that they depend on, that get, get, gets to them. And then this argument Romney and Ryan are making, Elliot, that, oh, it's okay because if you're over 55, we're not going to touch you. What are they saying? What they're saying to retirees is, we're not going to touch you. We're just going to screw your your children and grandchildren. Right. Do they do they think people are that selfish? Right. I mean, well, look, they you know they're Republicans. They might. This is uh, you know they're basically saying throw your grandkids under the bus. <laughs> right. it, it, that, that's never been a political slogan I've heard before. But you never know what works. Pol <laughs> political blogger Craig Crawford. Thanks for coming on the program. Good to be here.